Hello everyone. In this video, I want to speak about a very specific aspect happening between Jupiter and Saturn. What's interesting about this aspect is it's about to happen and it'll be in energetic orb within the next month or so. It's going to move out of orb for several months and then reconnect at the end of this year into the first few months of 2024. This is the crescent phase sextile, 60 degree separation from Saturn to Jupiter. So right here, look at Saturn, seven degrees Pisces. It is moving into with Jupiter a 60 degree aspect. So let's progress this by mid June, they exact this aspect. So look at Saturn at seven degrees Pisces, it's about to go retrograde. Boom, 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 there we go. And it goes retrograde stations just as Jupiter is exacting, I think just like a couple days later from that exact date in a sextile to that Saturn. So that's going to stay with an orb for several weeks. And as we progress it throughout the year, they separate, they actually move into a quintile, which is a 72 degree aspect by the time we reach the latter months of this, I guess, August, September or so. And Jupiter goes retrograde in Taurus. Saturn is about to station direct in Pisces. Now, by the time we get to December, they are already moving back into a sextile, right? It's funny, they, they begin their first sextile while Saturn is stationing direct, uh, retrograde rather, and they begin their second sextile episode while Jupiter is about to station direct. So let's just look at this week by week. Since Jupiter is stationing direct, it's moving really slowly. Saturn's gonna catch up. They basically stay within a degree of each other. Up until, up until March, mid-March or so, okay? 13 degrees Pisces, 16 degrees Taurus. By then, they're beginning to separate beyond the orb of a crescent phase sextile. So this is really interesting. There's a very particular dance happening. Now, you know, all aspects are in phasal relationship. If we learn about the phases, there is a, a, a natural flow of relationship from the conjunction at zero degrees all the way back to the square, the opposition, the final square, and then the final conjunction. And we can really look at these of different phases of relationship. Within these phases, there are particular aspects, particular stations, or particular intentions are manifesting and playing themselves out within that particular phase of relationship experience. So this is in the crescent phase, which is in the the basic teachings of the crescent phase, when two planets are within a separation of 45 degrees to 89 degrees. That's a very internal phase, right? When two planets are manifesting within that crescent phase, it's not new, it's not just beyond that conjunction, right? It's not like those first 45 degrees where there's a lot of subjective development. It's already gotten to know itself. So there's a grounding, there's a stabilization, there's an internalization that happens in the crescent phase. Now that sextile aspect is actually a really powerful and potentially very helpful aspect from the point of view. It represents a point within the journey where there is the potential for a, a more clarified awareness of the cycle of what's going on and what is needed to further the evolutionary purpose. So there's a lot of awareness of what's needed, how one can apply oneself in the ways that are necessary at this time can also be resisted, right? Because it's not a challenging aspect. Um, with Jupiter and Saturn, it's not particularly challenging. I always say, even with like harmonious aspects, if we're looking at Pluto, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be easy. But the thing with sextiles, it's easy to ignore. It's easy to resist it, to be quote unquote lazy and not apply oneself. So what I wanna do in this video is speak to the nature of this um, crescent phase sextile between Saturn and Pisces and Jupiter and Taurus, what's the invitation, what's the potential? Just for our own pedagogy, let's just count so we can understand visually why it's a crescent phase sextile. This is a question I get a lot. It's always helpful for those that need this support. You put your finger on the slower moving body right, and you count the number of degrees of separation until you reach the faster moving body. Okay, so in this case, from Saturn to Jupiter, we're looking at 
uh, these two planets moving into a 60 degree elongation. If Jupiter was, let's say, in early Capricorn, we'd go from Saturn all the way around to early Capricorn, that would be a um, last quarter phase sextile, meaning not 60 degrees, but 300 degrees, right? 60 degrees before the cycle ends, as opposed to 60 degrees after the cycle begins. It's a nuance, but think about it. We're looking at 60 degrees after a new cycle. That's very different than 60 degrees before the completion of a cycle. It's helpful to understand where we're at in a larger, greater, long-term process unfolding. It's helpful. Quick promo, in the upcoming chart interpretation course, we will learn a lot about that. We'll be practicing chart interpretation with aspects and phases and applying that in our own work with needle charts and with transits. Okay. When we look at the relationship between Saturn and Pisces, and I mentioned this a little bit in the last video, it's a very essential relationship. Saturn wants to define and crystallize and give form and definition and agency and purpose. What are we doing with our life? How are we conditioning ourselves? What are we committing to and how are we creating a structural reality within which we can grow stronger over time? We cultivate self-responsibility. We stop deflecting judgment and blame and shame on the outside. We're not looking for approval. We're seeking our own standards and learning to live according to our own inner ethics, our own inner guide. Jupiter is insight. It's the ongoing expansion and comprehension of reality, who we are, our place in reality, what this is all about. With Jupiter, we align with greater opportunities, greater experiences that will expand our consciousness and teach us more about the truth. If we're learning the principles of the Tao, if we're learning the principles of reality, we have the opportunity with Jupiter to apply them, to act on them, to live them. We learn to be honest and sincere. Now, when you put Jupiter and Saturn in this crescent phase sextile, what's the opportunity here? We might have this greater ability to have insight, two ways to say it, insight about the natural law of Saturn. Right? This is Jupiter relative to Saturn. Ah, I, I get it. I can see my potential, Jupiter, right? All the goodness and my vision and what's possible and where I want to grow. And I know what I need to do to grow into it long term, what I need to commit to. I get it now, right? The kind of insight that allows us to say, ah, I'm going to do this. I see what's possible. And this is the work that's needed to do it. So the ability to contract, right, to bring our energy in and commit to a long term process because we have the adequate insight. The other way to say it, this is thinking about it, Saturn relative to Jupiter. Where our structural reality isn't livable, where there's too much harshness, where there's depression, where we feel stuck or defined by circumstantial experiences, like the status quo of our life, our financial situation, um, our health, our relationships, um, that which doesn't feel ground, grounding and, and sustainable, but we're living it every day. Saturn is our gravity. It's like, it's what we're doing every day. It's the structural reality of our life. And where it's like a form without content, where it doesn't feel meaningful, Jupiter says here, ah, okay, now I'm having these insights about what I really love, what I really want, what feels joyful and meaningful to me. And let's apply some wisdom and lightness and spontaneity to open up what might have become too hardened, to bring some authenticity and sincerity. And this might mean, what does it look like to be a little more honest with myself, to be willing to take some risks? This will strengthen and further refine our commitment and what we're growing into, what we're strengthening into. Now, the challenge with this aspect is it can be really easy to just kind of go with things being easy, not necessarily being confronted. Mind you, Jupiter squaring Pluto, so I mean, there's a lot of deep confrontation happening this year. But relative to this aspect, when it comes to applying these changes, there may be ways in which it's easy to just say, oh yeah, well, I don't need to do this. No one's making me do this, or there's no stress for me to do this. No one's going to give me a sticker. I'm just going to not bother. I'm not going to try. Almost like there's an abundance in front of us. And well, yeah, I'll just wait till tomorrow. I was thinking about these experiences I had when I was a child when, for various reasons, I wasn't given the proper Saturn boundaries. 
And I remember at the time thinking, oh, this is not good for me. I, I wish there was more consequence involved. I wish there was more order, more structure. Um, there's too much freedom. This doesn't feel right. And I'm a very Jupiterian person. I just have these very specific memories of, and I'll share these two particular stories with you. Um, one was this moment, I'm the youngest of four, and there was a moment when, I don't know why, but my parents decided to stop enforcing that we take out the, the trash. Like I remember every week I would have the job of emptying all the little garbage bins in each room and putting it in the main trash, right? And maybe taking the trash outside or something like that. I didn't enjoy doing it. Like every chore for a child feels like a big thing, but I also was glad to do it. Like there was something about the accountability and doing it that felt really important. And I think I got like stickers or, or rewards or allowance or something. There was a situation where I was then given, I was gifted um, without needing to earn it. All I remember is doing that meant I'm earning something. And when the hard work was taken away, a part of me didn't feel good about that. It's, I felt like I was being deprived of something important. Another experience was I used to take martial arts and there was a point where I was uh, ch practicing or training for, I think it was my red belt or my purple belt. And my sensei told me to read the pamphlet, the teachings that came with that particular modality and to um, be able to recite it verbatim. I remember him saying verbatim, but I didn't like, I didn't process that. So I didn't actually memorize it. I never once made the effort to memorize it. And some, for some reason or another, I just didn't like think I have to memorize this, right? The day came of the test and he asked me to recite it. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think to do that. I completely failed. For some reason, he still awarded me the belt. And it's interesting that I, 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 I didn't feel good about it. I think I was crying. I was very upset about the whole experience that I didn't memorize it. He was upset with me, but he still gave me the belt. And I didn't feel good about that. And the sense that I was deprived of a necessary failure experience, right? I'm actually remembering another story where I used to do these plays at the local JCC. Uh, one year I did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I did um, Grease and then I did Guys and Dolls. And I had a lead role in Guys and Dolls for some reason. And I don't know why or how it happened, but like the day of the show, I didn't have my lines memorized, but I didn't th think that that was an issue until I actually got on stage. And um, I don't know how we got to that point where the director didn't catch that I didn't know my lines to the point where I didn't, I didn't get that feedback or that stress from an external authority, right? Obviously it was up to me to do it, but I was a kid and I, on my own, didn't, I don't know how we got that far, but it was a very embarrassing experience um, to be on stage and to completely forget or space on my lines. There's a way in which I think we all need, not just as children, but throughout our life, we all need to feel the consequences of our failures, not punishment, but hey, you didn't do your work. You're not gonna just get a free pass. I talked in my Saturn and Pisces video in one of them about the issue with not earning our dopamine, right? We can scroll on Facebook and just stimulate ourselves endlessly. Um, and that's giving us a dopamine experience, but we're not actually earning it, right? Versus doing a really good workout and we're releasing a lot of dopamine, but we've earned it. And it's sort of natural to the biological development of the human species that you work really hard, you have to be out there. It's very new in this day and age where you can be really not putting forth effort towards a lot of things, but just receive a lot of um, dopamine rushes as a result of really just doing nothing, sitting there and doing nothing. So I think it's really important that with this transit, we're considerate to what is my responsibility to do? Because sometimes life will be very clear and say, hey, you can't pass go, you can't collect $200, you gotta do the work. 
um, it does that eventually. It catches up to us. Like there's really no graduating until we've really done the work in an ultimate sense. But it can also be very easy to get by. And we all know what it's like to get by. And a Jupiter issue is like, I can wing it. I can wing it, you know. Um, I remember once my friend in elementary school, we had to wear tzitzit, which are the, the four fringes Orthodox Jews wear, right? But you would tuck your shirt in, right? So the rabbis wouldn't know if you were wearing tzitzit or not, right? But if you weren't wearing tzitzit, you would get in trouble. You had to wear tzitzit. So after morning prayer, uh, the principal was asking each one of us uh, to show if we were wearing tzitzit. And my friend, brilliant guy, just said, you know I'm wearing tzitzit, right? Something like that. And, and the rabbi was like, I trust you, go. And he wasn't wearing CT, but he was actually able to convince him. I mean, that's a total, like, that Jupiter optimism. I'll, I'll make it work. I'll make friends and influence people, and I can be a good salesperson. So we can cheat our way through life. We can be dishonest. We can know how to wing it enough to, like, I didn't study, but I'll pass a test, or I don't really know what I'm talking about. I didn't really uh, practice, but somehow I, I passed, you know, my graduate degree in surgery school, and oh, I have a surgery tomorrow. Wait a minute, uh-oh, that's an issue. I don't actually know what I'm doing, right? And there comes a point where maybe it didn't matter so much in the moment. There is no one stopping us from our weakness, from our lack of effort, but it can be a huge issue later on, right? Let's say Saturn comes into a square with Jupiter, boom, or even a semi-square, 45 degrees, boom, that's an issue. Uh-oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I went too far without slowing down and really cultivating myself. So, some insights and stories and perspectives on this sextile. I'll close with just appreciating, during this time, it's fascinating to see the movement of retrograde between these two planets, right? Saturn, the planet of, of you know, consolidating, focusing. Contraction probably isn't the best word, actually. Consolidating, right? Compressing, right? Bringing it into clear alignment and focus and essential, essentializing, right? Jupiter is a planet of expansion and growth and insight and realization. And their main sextile phases are when Saturn goes retrograde and Jupiter goes direct. So that's just kind of interesting to be aware of. Like right now, Saturn's in this process of stationing retrograde. So there is a deep inner process. I'll probably make another video on Saturn moving retrograde soon. We're really going in. This is like a deeper reflection. Like what am I creating? How am I using my time? What's really meaningful? What do I really want to be doing? And then Jupiter's like, act on your intuition. Trust yourself. Trust yourself right now and really be willing to go inside and <clears throat> look deeper towards what you really want. It's kind of like a double Taurus energy because that's that crescent phase is a very Taurus vibe. And then we have Jupiter and Taurus as well. And then when Jupiter is stationing direct, there's a lot of gleaning a, an immense amount of self-honesty and insight. We're learning a lot about integrity, what it means to be an honest person this year. It'll be squaring Pluto for its final time as well at the end of this year. That, that will just be a very uh, another very powerful phase to integrate a lot of our evolutionary work. Quick announcement, very, very soon, I have mentioned the chart interpretation course, which will be beginning in late August. Before then, in July, I'm going to be teaching a composite and synastry course. So stay tuned to that. That is going to be available on my website. As soon as it launches, I'm going to add that in the description below. Thank you for watching.